All right, guys, we have a 2008 Yamaha Drive. Uh, the customer called, said this one is not holding a charge. Uh, what I did was already, to not bore you with, was I disconnected the battery. The connections weren't really that strong to begin with. They were basically just set on there and not tightened down. So I disconnected them and put the battery charger on it overnight on a slow trickle charge. So that way I can make sure we can start with the fresh battery. And it's been sitting for just about 24 hours now, so we could do some battery tests to make sure it's good. I'll do a load test on it and make sure the voltage stays up, and just to confirm that the battery is indeed holding its charge. But we'll hook the card up and we'll see if it's a charging issue, or a like starter generator issue, or if it's a voltage regulator. First things first, flip the seat off. Alright, so we'll take our, you can see the battery's not even installed correctly, so we'll take care of that as well. But we've got to clean this battery up, it's a bit gnarly. Alright, 13 volts. Could be our problem right there, it's just a bad connection. And it's not dropping off, so... 12 and a half volts. Alright, so we know the battery condition itself is good. That's a good sign. I don't like the Yamaha system for putting batteries in. I don't like their hold down system at all. Now we'll clean these. New tool we're trying out here, we got these drill mounted cleaners, links down in the description. That makes for a quick work. Right, so as far as the connections go, we're going to figure them out later. We just want to make sure the cart starts, runs, and charges first, that's our priority. And then we'll address these clamps. You see, people never really tighten these down like they should because they they don't like dealing with trying to connect and disconnect the battery so they don't tighten them down like they're supposed to. That's when you run into issues folks so when you don't do it the right way. Take the extra few minutes and tighten them down. Now what you're going to see me do, the positive is tight, the negative is not. But what I'm doing here is just a temporary measure because if we have to change these ends it's much more time efficient to just clamp it down. Now we just need to check our charging system. First we gotta get this stupid thing right. Alright, it seems like we're gonna have to pull the carburetor before we can do any work to it. Alright, so let's do that. Brand new filter. And the hardest part about getting to this carburetor is getting to the 12 millimeter air box or the bolts on the carb itself. They are down in between the gas tank. You need to be a contortionist to get down in there. Because you know, they couldn't make this air box a little bit smaller. They'd make it freaking huge. There's the vacuum line on the fuel pump that's, in my opinion, too tight. For what it is. This one here could have been just a hair longer, but what do I know? I'm not an engineer. I only work on them. Sometimes these little clips can be a bitch. Try not to rip the gasket. Shouldn't have to disconnect anything other than the fuel line. You can leave... Well, yeah, we're gonna do a complete cleaning on this, so... We have to take this off as well. Which there's an E-clip right here. Try not to lose it, because it will go flying. And then gently pull that back. Set the throttle cable off. 
Now we just gotta get the fuel line off. And then what I'll do is I'll just kind of manipulate the fuel line a little bit with the pliers in order to break it free. Sometimes you gotta trim them, especially if they don't spin. Yeah, see, I'm gonna be ripping this one, so there it goes. Okay, you got lucky on that. And then you can just work it off. All right, so there is fuel pressure, so I'm thinking the fuel pump works. We just have to get this carburetor cleaned. All right, let's get it apart. We'll spray this on. We're just gonna put this on here to help break down this mud. We're going to the parts washer with this for sure. See what it looks like inside here. Bet you it's blocked. Oh yeah. I don't know if you guys are going to be able to see that real well. Look at that crap in there. There's debris. Debris and water. Take the O-ring off. So I get the varnish off. There we go. Okay, so we have to get this out first. Got to be careful with this one. The Yamaha carburetors, this port here, you don't want to screw this up. And then like all these little bits we're going to clean with carb cleaner. But the main carb body, after we get it disassembled, we're going to take it over to the parts washer and clean it. Alright, so the float has a pressed fit pin. They're a little tricky to get off sometimes, so I try to be gentle. I'm trying to remove it, but I got to use pliers so I can grab it. And once you get it past the press fit, it comes apart fairly easily. Nice and gently though, not, don't use a lot of brute force on it. This screw you don't have to take off, that only holds the bracket on. You can leave it there. Here's a throwout idle set screw, you can leave that there as well. Get the gasket. Oh, good. The gasket came off without any issues. We are ready to go to the parts washer. All right. So now I got the bowl all nice and shiny, and carburetor is definitely much cleaner now. Almost looks brand new. Still has some dirt on it, but we can't go nuts and crazy trying to get everything off because we never will get done here if we do that. Now, and everything's flowing like it should. Make sure I got all the crap out of it. Carburetor cleaner make, makes these gloves a little slippery when they're doused in it. Typically you don't have to take that jet apart. I've never had to. This float also has a suspended float valve. So I'll make sure you don't lose it. It's not a free floating valve, so it's one thing to keep in mind. Oh, all right, so here's my first mistake. this in before I put the float back on. Duh. Okay. I can 
install our pin. Rinse the bowl out. Nice and clean, shining like a new panty. Drain always goes towards the fuel line. I try to keep the carburetor cleaner away from these gaskets as much as possible because they expand. And then they're a royal pain in the ass to try to get in back in their little slot. So this side goes towards the cart. Throttle cable, choke cable. Okay, we're ready to reinstall it. Turned out pretty good. This thing should fire right up now. I'm going to install our throttle cable first. Fight with the E clip. They're not terrible, they're just a pain in the ass. Okay. Okay. These little clips here are a pain right in the ass, though. I am going to. flush through the fuel system before we hook that fuel line up. I'm not going to go through all that for only have to do it again. Sometimes wearing gloves can be a little inconvenient to work on these things, but believe me, it saves your fingers a lot of crap. All right, now we gotta flush the fuel system. All right, so you guys have seen me use this pump before. This is my fuel system flushing kit. We're gonna also change this fuel filter, but we're gonna do that after we pump this out a little bit. We don't pump a lot, just pump enough to pull out some of the nastiness. fairly quick and easy. Typically don't go that quick. It's a very handy little pump to have for stuff like this. Definitely makes keeping up with the fuel system much easier. everything back together you make sure your choke cables in line which it's good throttle cables in place all the gaskets are in place the fuel line is back connected while we have the extra room we're going to change this fuel filter the fuel just drain back into the tank Remember, the filter always points towards the tank. The filter itself will point towards the tank. Everything's done on this. Let's get the air box back on. This can sometimes be a little tricky because, one, you can't see. Put the breather hose back on for the PCB. Get our 10 millimeter air box bolts started here. Let's 
sometimes the airbox clips like to fall off. Which it's not a big deal to put them back on. It's just a pain in the ass because they like to fall off. I will get the bolts in the back here just touching the airbox frame just to make it a little faster when we go to tighten everything up. The hardest ones are these 12 millimeter nuts that you have to put on. I'm going to say sometimes it's easier without gloves. In some cases it can be, but I always try to wear my gloves. No matter what. Carburetor cleaner getting on your skin, it'll dry it out. Not only that, everything that goes through your skin gets absorbed into your bloodstream and eventually hits your liver and other vital organs, so why risk it? It's not worth it. Okay, that's tight. Now we can tighten up the Rear ones, which are really close. So now let's do the battery check. All right, so we're at just over 12 and a half volts. Well, our, our charging system's working as it should. It's holding right at 14.2 volts. Um, it's starting right up, so I'm thinking they maybe just had a bad battery connection. What I want to do is I'm going to get these connections made a little bit better here because I don't like the way this is set up. Uh, I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to change out these terminals for my style terminal because I don't like the ones Yamaha has. They, I think they suck. So we're going to just change these out completely. I prefer to use this style whenever possible. We're going to start with our ground. This is a very important connection on these carts. They, for some reason, keep them separated from everything, so, yeah. But we're gonna start scratch, from scratch here. And give everything a whole new lease on life. Because these are terrible. So, all right, we gotta strip this back. We're gonna crimp the new cables. Okay. This cable is also going to get crimped in there as well. So it's still only one connection. And we're going to be using our cable crimpers. So we take our ground, main ground, and then we're going to take our pigtail ground. And it's really great because they all will fit in the same connector which makes life a little bit easier. I try to do this with just two hands. There we go. And then we bite it down. And that's technically a really good crimp but I'm going to go one step further and crimp it a little tighter just to ensure that it's good and tight. Okay. Might not close the crimps all the way, but we're gonna. There we go. Yeah, and that's a much better fastener than any solder connection. And the reason for that is because solder connections can get hot, and if they get hot, they melt. And if they melt, 
they fail. So usually the hotter they get, the faster they fail. And as they keep failing, you start running into battery terminal melting issues, and then, you know, it's, it's just a whole another mess that you don't really need to be in if you can avoid it. That's why I don't like to solder any connections like this. I like to crimp them in mechanical fastener. Now it's okay to solder them after you crimp them. Okay. That is a nice solid connection. All right, so what I like to do is drop the terminals on the battery facing the direction of the wire. Now the positive terminal is much larger in diameter than the negative terminal. So this, this cable clamp we have to spread. I like to use this clamp spreader here. Works fairly good. I'm sure there's other ways to do it, but that's how I do it. And then I'll get them close and then we'll tighten them down on the battery. One side will be for the light kit, the other side will be for the golf cart. It's just the way I like to do it. It's pretty much how I've done this since I've been doing this for a living. And then what I'll do is instead of taking the clamp off that you would normally put your wire on, I'll put this ring terminal in between the two. Everything will be nice and tight. And then we'll spray battery terminal protectant. Runs, lights work, turn signals are blinking away. Tighten that battery down and then that'll be done. So just to give you an idea of what we did here, you can see we changed out the terminal. There's the positive, I'm sorry, there's the negative. Here's the positive. And the light kit is here. The main cart harness is here. Same thing goes on this side. Two separate connections. The battery now is anchored in place. Everything's good as far as water goes. The state of charge of the battery is good. The charging system is working and the cart fires right up now. So, but that's it for this video. It might be a little longer than I expected it to be. So guys, thanks for watching. I really do appreciate it. If you liked the video, don't forget to like it. If you like my channel, consider subscribing. Be sure to check the video's description below for links to products that I use every day and to bring you this content. I really do appreciate it. Clicking those links does help me out and it doesn't add any additional cost. All right, guys, thanks for watching. I really do appreciate it and we'll see you in the next video. Oh.